So we previously did an episode on JavaScript module bundling. Lies. And then you spent three weeks crying in a corner because we did that show. Mm -hmm. And then someone actually brought out the thing that we said was a joke. I can't remember what it was. It was like roll up Webpackify or some weird mix of stuff. And then it became a thing. Frankenstein's JavaScript monster. It was great. I would actually love it if a module came out that was Frankenstein.js or something. It probably is. It probably exists. is. It's probably a library. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Where were you going with <laughs> that? Today I wanted to talk a little bit more about Webpack and specifically giving people three tips. I've been doing some research recently um, into React and sort of web performance on real world devices. Um, and uh, this was sort of backed up by the survey that I did where I asked people, you know, what are you doing with React in production? Are you using Webpack, Webpack 1, 2, Browserify? What are you Whether doing? Whether they were bundling or not and yeah. how they were picking it. And yeah. yeah, yeah. And what I discovered was that a lot of people, um, a lot of people are confused by code splitting, but uh, concepts like code splitting, um, some people are using it, some are not. Some are using it and then not entirely understanding how to do it right. So I wanted to quickly cover some of the concepts there in case it helps. So do you know what code splitting is? That's the way that you basically say this, this window or this bundle should consist of these files, right? And then you kind of say, so that's going to be bundle one, that's going to be bundle two, that's going to be bundle three. So right. splitting is the act of deciding where those lines are. Right. And if you're doing it intelligently, maybe you're just going to you know, ship down the smallest amount of JavaScript necessary for a route or a view to your users, and then lazy load in the rest. This isn't, yeah. this isn't a new idea. Gmail did it like a million years ago. In Webpack, it's pretty, I would say that once you know how code splitting works, it's pretty trivial to do on every project, but it's getting to that point that requires you to read like a bajillion blog posts. So you're um, going to do it in this five tips. I'm going to cover it in 15 <laughs> seconds. So um, in Webpack, if you're using require.ensure in your Webpack 1 code, yes. um, it'll basically allow you to apply code splitting. Um, if you're using Webpack 2, you can use system.import to do the same thing. So if it detects that you're using that, um, it'll allow you to basically um, split up that bundle based on that particular blob of JS being used. So every time it, it runs into a required and ensure for, say, a view, it'll put that code into a new chunk. Yep. Um, and if you navigate to that chunk, so if, if you um, happen to be using Webpack with things like React Router, for example, it plays in really, really nicely. You can just load in the JS necessary for a route and then lazy load in the other pieces as needed. Where people get tripped up here is either they'll um, you know, they'll use code splitting or they'll think they'll use code splitting because Webpack also supports this other idea called the Commons Chunk plugin. So the Commons Chunk plugin, so normally in an app, let's say you're using, you know, libraries or frameworks or whatever, right? Um, you can have multiple views, some of which are going to have similar code, yeah. right? And that's sort of your vendor bundle, right? And, and that's code that you may need to load up up front in order to get, you know, the route useful in any way. It might be your Lodash or your React or whatever have you. This is kind of the stuff that has to be loaded no matter what. And it's common enough that it should just, even if it's large, it's kind of like, OK, take the hit because every single page is going to need right. it. Yeah. Exactly. So the Commons Chunk plugin helps you basically split out the stuff that's common between your different uh, modules uh, into, okay. a, into a common vendor bundle. Yeah. Right. So that's tip two. Now, where people are running into issues with code splitting is that they're splitting their code, but they're still, in many cases, shipping down a huge blob of JavaScript that they don't necessarily need for just the stuff that route's going to do. Um, so I'm, well, what I was seeing in, in the, the traces I was profiling was um, some people are shipping like up to a meg of JavaScript just for a single route. Which is and is this because kind of they've got a large vendor? JS, like a, a large common vendor JS, or is it just? It's a mix of things. Sometimes it's a large vendor bundle where they're like just happening to ship down, you know, libraries that that route doesn't need. In other uh. cases, it's where they're loading in stuff for other routes by accident or just not not being particularly diligent about what they're including in the main chunks for each view. Got so you. that's a good thing to stay on top of. Just keep in mind, you know, what size. Um, Webpack has got this way of like summarizing all of the chunk sizes when you're doing code splitting yep. in the report of view. Just keep an eye on those sizes. Um, we're currently, we've been working on an RFC um, for Webpack to maybe try providing you like performance insights, a performance budget of some sort. And if something like that lands, I think it will hopefully make it a little bit easier for people to this is know that they have an issue. This is a thing I saw you looking at where it might show like a red line yeah. going, this is X amount of like kilobytes or megabytes, and you should seriously consider yeah. breaking it up. The other tip was if you happen to be using um, HB2, uh, there is another Webpack plugin called the Aggressive Splitting plugin. It just sounds really violent. Yeah, I was going to say, that doesn't sound like something I'd want. But. <laughs> uh, the Aggressive Splitting plugin basically gives you a way to um, split up your chunks with a maximum and minimum size. So you can specify exactly 
what it's like upper bounds you want, and it will figure out some magic around that to make those those work. It um, sounds very risky. I don't know why. Just the idea of like, oh, you've reached this certain max size, so chop in half and don't worry about it. It works in practice. I think it's definitely something that people need to spend a little bit more time on. But um, it it's supported. It's good to know that White Pack is sort of exploring the ideas around H2. Um, I think that in addition to sort of, so we've, we've talked about three tips. We've talked about code splitting, common strong plugin, aggressive splitting plugin. Um, as always, because we're all about the service worker, <laughs> if you're going to... If you're going to use all these libraries and things in your builds these days, it's great to not have to pay any, you know, as much cost to the user to like load them up again on repeat visit. Yeah. So, you know, there are plugins like Service Worker Precache Webpack plugin, yep. um, which let you use Service Worker Precache, which we work on and is beautiful. Just build your Service Worker for you. You don't have to think about it. Yep. Saves your user's time when it comes to that repeat visit. So check that out as well. Um, plenty more Webpack tips in some of the articles that we've been tweeting about lately and writing, um, so check those out. Because I believe you've been writing a lot on Medium lately. I have been writing a lot on Medium <laughs> lately. Um, people can check that stuff out if they so please. Those are just a few Webpack tips, and hopefully they will come in useful.